In this packaging tutorial, we're going to model this dental floss packaging. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and start with the start file, which has some reference lines already set up for us. So I'm going to press the escape key and we're going to come to the front view. You're going to note that I'm not in perspective by default. And I'm also recording this in Blender's light theme because it's easier to see all the profiles that I've got set up. And I also have set up wire edit to be this green, which helps it to show up a little bit better also. So the first thing that we're going to do is note that the cursor is down here at the center of our 3D universe. And I'm going to press Shift A and we're going to add in a plane. I'm going to rotate it around 90 degrees and let's just make it three inches. It doesn't need to be any specific size because we're just going to scale it up. We're going to scale it till it gets right to this line and to the bottom. So S key, roughly scale it and then move it. S key, just so it's basically looking like that. Okay. Command A or Control A on the PC applies the scale. Tab key, we're in vertex mode. So we're going to come over and we're going to select these vertices, go to the move tool, and then you can just come over to the transform. If this is not up, press the N key, come to median and just zero that out. Okay. I'm going to take these vertices and match them very roughly to that side. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the loop cut function. I'm going to put one loop cut in here and we're going to make it four. Just a general starting point. So I'm going to come back in. We're in the move tool. And you're going to note that I'm in select box. So just be aware that you can change the mode here. And this is independent of the actual select tool. So it's a little bit confusing that they've got a specialized select tool. When you're in other tools, they independently have the same modes. I think it's a little bit confusing, but that's the way it is. So now I'm going to move these over just a little bit. And then this middle one I'll pull out slightly just so that they have the rough curvature of the profile. Now at the bottom, I'll move this in a little bit more closely. We're going to use that loop cut function again, and I'm going to put another loop right there, just kind of at the start of the curve at the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing at the top. But what we need to do here, in fact, I'm going to press the tab key, leave edit mode. I'm going to hide this profile because that one's sort of just going to get in the way. This is a cutout where when your thumb opens up the top lid, there's a cutout here. And so that's what this represents. Okay. So let's come back to the major geometry and I'm going to add a loop here just to roughly get us into the shape of where that's going to be. Okay. For defining the curvature at the top, we need to add a few more divisions like that. That's going to be good. And then we're going to switch over into edge mode. I'm going to select this top edge and press the E key and then Z to constrain that till it becomes like that. Okay. So now we can switch back over into vertex mode and I'm just going to take and move these up like that. Just to basically form the shape. And then this one, We'll kind of pull down about like that. Okay. That works pretty well. In fact, maybe I'll take these two, move them up just a little bit more. Generally, it's the center of the edge that you want to get closest to the curve profile and not the vertex. Okay. So we're going to add another loop here to match up right to that. Okay. So now let's switch over into face mode. And I'm going to take these two polygons. I'm going to press the X key. We're going to delete those faces. And I'm going to pull that so it looks about like that. In fact, I'm going to do something else. I don't want that being curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and add one loop kind of at the bottom. And I'm going to have a scale that 
so it is flat. And then I can come over and move that until it is about looking like that. Okay. Now let's invoke the knife tool. You just press the K key. I'm going to start here. Click, right click, and that allows you to start a new cut. And then come here and then put that right there. Hit return. And then we can just marquee around those vertices. And I can sort of move those in to generally match the curve that I've got. Okay, there we go. So that is our basic starting point. So we actually have a little bit more geometry than we need. So I'm going to switch over here into edge mode and I'm going to double click on that, bring up the context menu and we'll dissolve. We don't need that. Okay. Let's take a look at our corners. In fact, I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to move it down even just a little bit closer down there so that we're having more of that curve available for curved geometry. Switch over into vertex mode, select that vertex, come over into vertex mode, and we're going to invoke bevel. And by default, you see it's only going to give us a basic bevel. So just stop anywhere and we're going to put in four segments. And we could come in like here and we could just tweak this. But you see, it's it moves so quickly that I'm just simply going to undo and it'll remember those values. So we're going to come back up to bevel again. And when you start pulling away, then we have a little bit more control. So again, it's the center of the edges that I'm generally kind of matching up to my Bezier curve profile. OK, so that'll work pretty well. What we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to face mode, select this face, bring up the context menu, poke that, press the one key to go back to vertex mode, select this, hold the shift key, select here, bring up the context menu, and then do at last. Okay, let's come down here, do the same thing on the bottom. In fact, this, I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to move this even just a little bit further over. Select this vertex, go to bevel, just pull until you see it start to do that. There we go. In fact, I think for this one, I'm going to increase the segments to four. That'll give us just a little bit better refinement. Okay, face mode, select that, poke, Sh select that, select this and then do a merge at last. There we go. Now this is going to be a pretty straightforward object, but I do want to show you something that if you're ever working on a much more complex object and you're really wanting to think about efficiency in terms of reducing the number of polygons that you've got, we can do something that we're about to do here. The front and the back are going to be planar, although when we look at this from the side, you can see that there's actually a tapering to the form, but it's still going to be planar. And so that gives us some freedom to reconfigure. So what I'm going to do is press the K key. I'm going to have us click here to here to here. And then in edge mode, I can double click this, hold the shift key, double click this, and we can dissolve two edge loops. Okay. So that's something you could do to reduce the complexity in a situation like this. So let's do this. What we need to do now is we need to mirror this left to right and give it some thickness. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to give this a solidify function. Let's press the tab key to leave edit mode. And we're going to look at this in the left view. And I want to give this a positive value. And I'm going to zoom down because I initially want to match this edge up to this edge. So I'm just going to grab this and extend it until that bottom edge gets right about there. OK. There we go. So now we come over and I'm just going to apply that and we need to add mirroring to this. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove some geometry. So option Z to remove X-ray face mode. And I'm going to remove this face and this face X key remove faces, and then I can double click and it'll get that loop, that internal loop. So I'm going to press X key and then faces. 
and on the back here where we're going to mirror because this is at the symmetry point left to right so again if we look at this it's on the symmetry point come up to select linked flat faces and then the x key and we can remove that easy easy tab key leaves edit mode come over to add modifier and we're going to add a mirror to this so we're going to go across the x but we also want to go through the z but we're in default mode which means the pivot is going to be showing us a match to the world's coordinate system so i want to switch over to local and so that means we want to mirror through the object's local z-axis so we're going to turn that on here okay and then let's go ahead and apply that perfect Let's come back into edit mode, the rounding around the corners. So switch to edge mode. Select both those front and back perimeter edges. Let's zoom down. Switch over to the bevel function. And we want this value to be a value of 2, but we want shape to be 1. Switch over to active tool. Click, hold, and drag. And just pull out till you get something about like that that'll work. So let's come over here and turn on subdivision now and we can take a look at this. So let's add subdivision modifier. Let's take this to a value of 2. We want this to be sort of a corner point here at those four corners and the edges. In fact, let me turn on perspective. This is going to be a little bit easier with perspective. Do you see this line right here? This corresponds to this edge. If we turn off optimal display and leave edit mode, it, the subdivision gradually transitions the polygons over, and that sort of drags curvature into some of the planar regions. It is subtle, but what I'd like to do is constrain that so we're not. So let's come back in, press the tab key, come back into edge mode, and I'm going to double click this edge here hold the shift key and do the same thing there, press shift and E, and then just begin mousing left to right. And you can see the crease makes it so that you don't have subdivision passing that edge. And you just want to make sure this is a value of one tab key. And now do you see how that's made it? So this area is going to be perfectly flat. So we kind of want to do the same thing for the interior polygons. So tab key, Double click this edge, Shift E. There we go. That's such a great feature for concentrating curvature where it needs to be, but not where it doesn't need to be. Okay, and we can do the same thing in the back. Double click this, Shift E, and then just mouse back, back and forward, left and right. There we go. Okay. Now let's come down here and look at the corners. So these corners, we don't want it to subdivide through. So in vertex mode, I'm just going to select these, come up to vertex, and do a vertex crease, which is the same operation, but for vertices. Just mouse left and right until you see it happen, and you want that to be a value of 1 also. Okay, so on the back, we actually don't need this window in the back. So what I'm going to do here is let's turn off subdivision visibly temporarily. I'm going to come into edge mode, hold the shift key, then do a dissolve edges on those, double click, hold the shift key to deselect these, and then bring up the context menu and we're going to have it do bridge edge loops. Do you see how it patches that? So that's pretty cool. We don't really need to configure these to look any more pretty because it's all planar in the back. So I'm not going to really stress about it. Okay, so let's come back to the front. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to just now basically lop the top off to give us a separate piece of lid geometry. So let's turn on X-ray, come into face mode. We want to switch back to select box. And we're in the bevel tool, so we can do that here also. We don't specifically need to be in another tool. Select that, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to separate that to become its own piece of geometry. Okay, so tab key leaves edit mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us 
take this and first off let's do a set origin to geometry and I'm just going to move that up ever so slightly okay just as if there's a natural little gap it's going to help it to show better when we go to render